another Guild Ball Informer video. Uh, this is um, Hayes Hobby Blog. Uh, I'll have to check what episode. Episode 8 ish. Um, and today I just want to talk about um, what I've been up to. So we've just had Vapor, uh, Vap Nartak in York at York Racecourse the last weekend. Just gone. So uh, I'll discuss that briefly. Um, on Tuesday, we didn't have a Steamforge news, but we did have Captain Rage, veteran Captain Rage for the Union, a spoiler card, so we saw his stat card, so I'll discuss that. I've also, because of that, just had a game with Captain Rage at my local club on a Thursday, just gone, so I'll give you my thoughts about that. And then, um, a bit of a shout out to Ben Redmond, uh, the guy who, the rankings guy, who has come up with a messengers guild, so he has made stack cards for um, all of us um, podcast and YouTube people um, to come up, try and force Steamforge's hand into another guild. So that's called the Messengers Guild. So I'll, he's actually given me some lovely cards, which I will, I will show you. And I'm gonna, if, if you haven't checked it out, uh, check the Battle Hammer. They've recently done a video where they've used uh, the Messengers Guild. Uh, I think it was Parker using them against Straw. And I think they're a bit OP, so if you want to have a look at that, just a bit of fun, nothing official um, at this stage, uh, maybe it will in the future, but nothing official, it's just a bit of fun from some fans and uh, just Ben Redman for that, great guy. So Vapa, Vapa just gone, um, uh, another win for Steve Newton, so if you've not listened um, to their WCWW podcast that they've just released, they did one very, very quickly after Vapa, where they've discussed Vapa in quite a lot of detail. They've also discussed Captain Rage because the prize for Steve winning was a Resin Rage. Um, so he actually uh, has the Resin Rage uh, with the stack card. So Rich Loxham was also down and the Steamforge guys, so he was showing around uh, Rage's card a little bit for people to have a look at. So there's been a bit of a fever about Rage. So if you've not seen it, uh, check it out. Um, if you look at Guild Ball on Facebook or on Twitter, you'll be able to see the card. For me, uh, who is a bit of, bit of a hardcore union, um, I am very excited, uh, as you can see. Um, we'll discuss his stat card of my thoughts in a second. Uh, so Vapa, I actually ended up finishing third. Um, so I played some really great opponents, so thanks to all those guys. I played Chris Rutter first, then I played Johnny Cannon, uh, then I played Jamie Giblin, uh, friend of the, not well, not how to call it, friend of the show, um, Channel Buddy or whatever. Um, and then I played Steve Easton um, and I played Steve Newton in the final. Uh, so Steve beat me in the final again. Uh, I think it's the third or fourth time we've met in the final um, and I've lost every time. So he is definitely turning into my nemesis, the pl one player I can't beat. Um, so, but there's a great banter between me and Steve, we played a lot, um, we speak a lot outside of tournaments and things as well, so we're great buddies, uh, so it's always quite fun playing him, um, and if you haven't listened to WCWWW, we've, um, we did something interesting in the final, because we played each other so many times, uh, we actually decided, for a bit of fun, fun in a final, in the tournament final, we decided to pick each other's team, so we had a roster of eight, and we picked each other's team, so uh, unsurprisingly, uh, he was playing Morticians. I dropped Mist for him, so I think he played, uh, I made him play Casket, Ghast, Silence, Cosset, Dirge, and Obulus. Uh, and for me, his main concern was Gutter, so he dropped Gutter for me. Uh, I'll go through my eight anyway, because I actually took uh, what sub most people will probably believe is a subpar lineup. Uh, I didn't have Decimate, I didn't have Mist, uh, I didn't have Avis and Greed. Two reasons for this. Um, firstly, uh, a buddy uh, local here, Quinn Duggan, was playing Masons and he was buying my Masons team, so he also wanted the Union part of that, so I'd lent him Avis and Greed, Decimate uh, and Mist. But also, uh, I was going to run Fish uh, right up until actually writing down the team sheet. I actually wrote Fish down on my team sheet before I crossed them out and wrote the Union. Uh, but I thought it would be quite a good idea, well it would be quite fun and a challenge for me. I've been to quite a few tournaments now, I think eight or nine. Um, and I thought it would be quite good to challenge myself for, to use different models. I know there's been a lot of talk 
uh, on the forums and on Twitter about uh, perceived underpowered models um, and a couple um, that I think people don't see as that strong in the Union is snakeskin minks, um, potentially hemlock now. So the lineup I took was uh, Blackheart Coin, uh, snakeskin hemlock minks, rage and fangtooth. So as I said, no uh, and gutter. Sorry. So no decimate, no mist, um, and no avarice and greed. Um, I ended up finishing third overall, so I've got a lovely, um, lovely mug to go with my collection. Um, and it came down to 12-10 in the final with Steve, and it all came down to the last initiative roll. Um, and whoever won that had an easy kill, an easy takeout, so we're going to win. Uh, and Steve was two ahead. He did win the roll um, naturally anyway. I think he got five and I got four or something, but... Um, but yeah, it was another fantastic game, and it's actually uh, a shout out to Steve. It was actually probably the funnest final I've ever played. Um, it was felt really, really relaxed. Usually, when us two play, it's quite tense because obviously there's a lot riding on it. But uh, but this was really relaxed, and we both made loads of mistakes, um, and it was really, really fun, uh, back and forth, uh, VP wise, uh, not knowing really who was going to win at any one point until the end. Um, so that was fantastic. I had a brilliant time. If any of you guys have not been to Vapa, uh, it's in York Racecourse, as I've said, and um, get yourself down. There'll be one next year. There was talk about them doing some sort of a triple slash team doublesy thing uh, next time around, so I'm excited to hear what that's going to be like uh, and get involved. It'd be wicked to be able to go down with your club mates or online mates and, uh, and play as part of a team. Uh, so that's Vapa, really. Um, it was good. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the third place considering um, the squad I took and the lineup that I took. Um, for me, I guess the player of the tournament was probably Hemlock um, or Blackheart. Hemlock being uh, in three games in particular, I can think of the two Brewers ones with Chris Rutter and Jamie Giblin, and, um, and this in the final anyway with Steve Morsitians. Uh, Hemlock blinding people. Uh, was amazing. Uh, blind was very effective all weekend, especially against those hard-hitting teams. It just shuts them down for a whole turn uh, if you can get it off. Um, so Hemlock was great, uh, and I say Blackheart because I actually use Blackheart quite differently to how I usually use him. With no mist in the team, I didn't really have um, as much of a goal-scoring threat as usual. So I kind of turned Blackheart to be my ball winner and uh, goal scorer and I think he scored four or five goals over the five games uh, scored two in the final so he was brilliant uh, there's one game I remember I think it, um, it, it was it was Blackheart and he was setting up for like a charge um, and instead of the normal charge I would have done to, to just take somebody out I actually charged I think it was Johnny Cannon I actually charged uh, into his mist uh, and tackled the ball and then uh, did a couple of dodges off off the um, off mist after that to then shoot and score and that was completely out of the blue so that was quite good um, so that was fantastic I enjoyed that uh, and for those that haven't been to tournaments or haven't been to Vapa in particular it's a, a very very good one there's lots of um, stalls there uh, selling things lots of historical wargaming there was a war machine tournament a relic knights tournament a Malifaux tournament a guild ball tournament so there's everybody all under one roof uh, so that was ace so Captain Rage next. Uh, I'm a bit of a fanboy of normal rage, so Captain Rage for me um, uh, is quite godly. Um, firstly, looking at his card, uh, he looks amazing, uh, but he, it is very clear that he does does one thing. He's in the team for one thing, and that's taking people out, killing people. So for those that haven't seen his move 5-7, I've got his stat card up here. Uh, he's tack 7, so he's rolling quite a lot of dice compared to normal. Um, uh, most captains are six. Uh, kick two six, so he's not that great at kicking. Defense four, armor one, uh, and his influence is three four. So he seems quite low initially um, until we move down. He's got a one inch melee and a thirty mil base, so standard rage. And then on his playbook, he has momentous results on the first six columns. So he's got seven column playbook with his tax seven. Uh, his first column he can tackle, which is great, it might actually come in handy. 
Um, oh, he's got momentous one damage, then he's got two hits, momentous two damage, three hits, he's got a knockdown or two momentous damage and a push, four hits, he's got three momentous damage, five hits, he's got three momentous damage and a push, six hits, he's got concussion momentous, and then seven hits, he's got four damage or three damage and concussion, neither of which are momentous. So he's all about the damage, he's all about the momentum, and uh, it looks like he's going to be putting out a hell of a lot of damage. Character plays, he's got Red Fury, cost one, uh, range three inches, so he can target a friendly model uh, within three inches, and they may immediately make an attack without spending influence. So anybody within three, it's quite short range, um, but I'm looking at Gutter, I'm looking at Decimate, I'm looking at potentially Fang, Tooth, uh, Avarice and Greed, all of those players, if, you, if they're a little bit ahead or engaging somebody else, um, Rage can get them to hit them first. Uh, specifically important, I guess, for like Avarice and Greed, you could get Rage to make Avarice and Greed hit whoever Rage wants to hit next and single them out, or you could get Fangtooth to hit them to knock them down first. Um, it's quite good for, uh, for like that, if you want a, a knockdown, instead of Rage just doing it himself and doing it on three hits, it's non-momentous. If you get Fangtooth to do it instead, it's momentous and it's only on one hit. So it's probably more likely of it going off with Fangtooth. Um, so that looks quite a cool little trick. Uh, I, I can think as well maybe getting, uh, if you can sidle up, if you can end a turn with um, Mist walking and engaging somebody, an opponent model that has the ball, uh, first activation you could then get a Rage to walk up behind Mist, get Mist to hit them to tackle them, and then potentially get Mist to hit them again and do where they go off the playbook, and then that's before Mist is even activated, uh, you've managed to pick the ball up. Uh, lots of little niche things like that that might be quite fun to try. Uh, the next one is Quick Time, which costs two, so the same as Honor. He uh, he can make anybody within four inches do a two inch dodge, including himself. So, um, quite good for moving people around, quite good for increasing Gutter's threat range. Uh, without having Blackheart in the team, you're losing Blackheart's legendary to shunt people two inches, so Rage can do it once a turn um, from his character plays. Uh, also useful for him for repositioning him, um, as we'll see in a second, he uh, still has uh, Furious, so he can still charge for free. So if he's tied up, one of the ways at the moment to stop Rage, uh, normal Rage, is to just engage him, because then he can't get his free charge. This way, Rage can actually quick time himself out of engagement to then charge back in. Um, I think it's probably useful tying him up anyway, just to make him spend that too influenced because then he only has actually has a charge and then two to spend himself so he's only got three in effect three or four to do damage with but it's another little uh, funky thing that he can do and then concussion like he has normally uh, on two guild boards which is six or seven hits for him uh, you lose target enemy model loses one influence that's quite good he's got 17 hit boxes like old rage um, character traits then he's furious as i've said he can charge for free so on the charge he's tax seven so he's got 11 dice on the charge um, as standard, if you could get other models engaging his target, he uh, obviously goes up with ganging up. Uh, he has an ability called Usurper, the Union. So this model gains plus one tack when making an attack against the named guild. So he gets plus one tack when he's attacking other Union models, which uh, will hopefully help um, make more pure builds. So if you put some Union in against him, whoever you're playing, it will be brutal as well as a mirror match, a Union against Union, because everybody he's hitting, he's getting plus one tack. Uh, so that's pretty wicked. So that takes him to tack eight, uh, tack 12 on the charge. He's also got Rising Anger. So like Gast and like Harry the Hat, if you hit him the first time you do damage in a turn, he gains two momentum. So it's pretty good for um, for kind of trying to negate people hitting him early in a turn. Also, it gives you the momentum that you require for counter-attacking. So if somebody comes in, obviously the first hit of a turn, you can't because you don't have any momentum, but as soon as they hit you and damage you, you gain momentum, which means the second attack you can then counter, um, which might make him a bit safer. Make, might make people stop wanting to hit him. He has a heroic and a legendary, so they're quite rare. His heroic is called Bloody Coin, when making an attack against an enemy model that is engaged by one or more friendly guild models, this model gains plus one attack and plus one damage to playbook damage results. So he, as well as getting um, the ganging up bonus normally from 
attacking someone who's also engaged by one of your models. If he does this heroic, he's getting another attack and he's getting another damage. So I think the intent is another model, um, another friendly model. So you've got to kind of get somebody else in first to engage him before Rage runs in. It can also work, I can see, quite well with quick time. So you can use that quick time to push somebody else next to you in to engage somebody before Rage then charges them to get this bonus and do his heroic. Um, so it looks pretty good. If you get that off um, and you are ganging up on them, that's plus two tack. He's tack seven anyway, that's nine dice. Um, if uh, they're a union, that's ten. Uh, if you can get Avarice and Greed, like I did last night, two single people out, you're on tack 12. Um, if Harry the Hat's there with his uh, amazingly big hat, uh, that gives you an extra one as well. Uh, so it does start to add up, you're starting to roll double digit figures of dice, uh, which is quite a good feeling. And you're also doing plus one damage. And his legendary play is basically giving that ability, called My Gang, to uh, all friendly models within six. So um, I didn't actually get this off last night at all, I never seem to be an occasion to use it, um, but it would be really useful, especially if you're making somebody else attack things, so if he stood next to Gutter uh, and you want to do your legendary and give them bloody coin so that, that Gutter's getting plus one attack and plus one damage, and then make her hit something, and then he gets it as well, so he can then run in and hit somebody and everybody's getting plus one damage and plus one attack. Uh, happy days! So that sounds pretty cool. Um, again, he's classed as an attacking midfielder, so you want to be playing quite far up the pitch, quite forward, in the face of people. Um, so he looks great, but he looks like he is just going to do one thing, and that's damage. I think he'll be able to delete a model a turn if you pick wisely. Uh, last night, he took out Ox twice, and he took out uh, Meat Hook, who was uh, severely ganged up on. Uh, so he did six points worth of VPs last night, although he did die. Uh, I was playing Ben Redmond's Butchers, um, and Rage dies, so he does die quite easily, he's a bit of a glass hammer. Um, but I like him, and he is fun, he is really, really fun to play. I think at one point I was rolling 16 dice, uh, or 17 dice on the charge, uh, with somebody singled out, and his legendary up, and being engaged, um, and it was amazing, it was a great feeling just rolling all them dice. Uh, at one point, I think I got, uh, I had somebody uh, decimate, I had thousand cutted somebody as well at rage charge, so I was on, I think I was on 16 dice, needing twos, uh, with no armour, and I think all of them hit, so I got 16 hits, uh, which is a wrap, obviously, not, um, and with his, with his heroic up, I think I did um, something like five, eight damage or something from the charge, and then go on to hit again. Um, you can get up to sort of 20 damage in, in one activation. However, uh, that being said, I think competitively, uh, from a tournament point of view, I think Blackheart for me still offers uh, um, a lot more, a lot more flexibility, a lot more versatility. As I said in my Vapor uh, discussion, Blackheart scored me loads of goals at the weekend. I'm not sure Rage uh, can do that. Uh, you're also relying on. Um, people allowing you, uh, opponents allowing you to play your game and um, allowing you to gang up on them. Um, I would imagine against teams like Fish, uh, Rage will be pretty ineffective. Uh, people with two inches, two inch melee, people with unpredictable movement um, will be laughing at Rage. Uh, I know he has his quick time to dodge in to negate unpredictable movement, but that means he's got two less influence and he's only can't, he then can't charge for free, so he's only got two to hit them with. So I'm, I'm looking at Honor, with responsive play, uh, you're only ever going to get one hit on honor with rage. Um, Obulus with unpredictable movement, Midas with unpredictable movement are all going to cause a big headache for people playing veteran rage. So I don't think people have too much to worry about at this stage with him. Although he does put out a lot of damage, I think it's all very situational. Um, Especially in tournament play, when you're getting up on the top tables, I think Blackheart offers that much more uh, rounded captain. I think um, anyone last night, uh, me, um, Brisket caused me issues with Rage because I couldn't really hit her with unpredictable movement, so I had to try and 
get her to trigger that first with somebody else before Rage then charges in. Um, so a lot to think about. He is hilariously fun to play, uh, and will actually has actually inspired me for my uh, potential cosplay at Vengeance of whoever's coming uh, with his trench coat. I've already done normal rage, so it's time for veteran rage, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, first impressions. He is different to to Blackheart. Uh, whether he is better, I, I'm undecided. Obviously, only played. Uh, him the once last night um, and not learnt all of his intricacies, not played him. I didn't actually use Gutter last night, so I'm not sure what he'll be like with her. Um, so lots of food for thought, but first impressions are good. I do really like him, he's really, really fun. The other thing that he might, um, maybe not, I was going to say in a tournament setting, rolling all them dice might be quite tough on the clock. Um, I know with Obulus, with his eight, uh, influence rolling loads of dice people are, are pushed sometimes um, with the timings uh, I can see the same sort of thing potentially with rage just with the amount of dice that you roll and all the extra attack all the other buffs um, and for him to really do the amount of damage that I'm talking about he needs um, quite a bit of setup so you need to have gone with another few models first like Avis and Greed uh, singling people out or Fangtooth knocking people down so I don't think he's as, he's quite as good at, at just taking a model out on his own as, say, Tapper is, um, or a couple of the other captains. But he is fun, and the model is amazing. So if you've not seen it, check out um, the Steve Newton on Facebook and WCWW on a podcast on Twitter. He's posted a picture of the Resin Rage. So that's Rage. Um, I'm going to take a little break, and I'll come back... Uh, with the messengers cards as I said and I'll discuss them uh, a little bit but uh, I'm excited for Rage and if you've not seen the picture of me uh, and Ben Redmond uh, playing Ben Redmond you'll see from my excitement on that on Twitter but it's going to be a good time to head for Union so watch this space uh, Union for Domination bring it Captain Rage he's my hero he's gonna take your health bar down to zero Ooh. So we're back, um, I've just checked actually, uh, and I made an error at the start, this is actually Hobby Blog episode 6, so I was getting a bit ahead of myself saying it was 7 or 8, um, maybe there will be, uh, we'll wait and see. So uh, the Messengers Guild is what I want to talk about next, so Ben Redmond, who's a local uh, North West Gaming Centre near us, has uh, come up with some uh, fan made, himself made... Um, stack cards for the uh, Messengers Guild, which is kind of the uh, unofficial name for um, us social media guys that do podcasts and YouTube channels. So he's actually created 11 cards for based on 11 people um, that are prominent um, social media figures. So he's got Steve Newton and Chris Rutter from WCWW, he's got Bill and Phil from Guild Ball Tonight, he has uh, Straw and Parker from the Battlehammer uh, YouTube, and he's got um, Jamie Giblin from Steamforge News, the pretty boy on Steamforge News, uh, and GBHL Podcast, he has uh, James Clark from Hot Gates Gaming, and he has done himself um, as the mascot, uh, as the rankings guy, and the guy that's made this, which is pretty cool, and then he's also done Jay and I uh, from Guild Ball Informer. So I won't uh, discuss all of them because that'll take a while, but if you want to have a look at those stack cards, they're on the Facebook group, on the Guild Ball Informer Facebook group. I think they're also on the other ones, uh, Guild Ball Supporters uh, and Guild Ball Players Club. So check those out. Uh, they're pretty cool. It's nothing official, it's just all unofficial fan stuff. Um, it may be made official if Steamforge watch this, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, everybody likes getting models made of themselves. Um, but just a massive shout out to Ben for putting the time and effort in to do this. It's uh, it's an amazing uh, bit of fun. Uh, it's pretty cool. If you have a check on the Battle Hammer, they've recently done a video called Something Special, I think, which they've actually played through. I think Parker played the, um, the Messengers Guild against Straw. Uh, and I think Semaphore, who was based on me, um, got a goal in that one. So go check it out. What's also pretty cool is 
that Ben has uh, a put a, an ability or a trait um, for something that uh, relates to that person to help try and sort of uh, cement who it actually is. So I'll go through mine and Jay's. So Jay's, Jay's is called Broadcast, so that's his character. Um, and he's on a 30 mil base on a one inch melee. He's movement 5, 7. He's got attack of 5, kick 3, 6, defense 4, armor 1, influence 2, 4. So pretty standard across the board. Seems like he's quite an all rounder. He can do pretty much everything standard defense and armor. Um, he has um, character traits. Uh, we'll go through his playbook first. He has, uh, on, on one hit, he has a single guild ball which triggers singled out, which is pretty cool, and he has one damage, uh, neither of which are momentous. Uh, two hits, he's got two damage, and he has a two inch momentous push. So it looks like he's all about pushing people around, singling them out, setting people up um, for other people to come in and do stuff to. He has, on his third column, he's got a tackle or a knockdown. So quite versatile, he can knock people down, he can tackle the ball, he can single people out, he can push people around. So a bit of an all-rounder. On four hits, he has a massive three momentous damage and a one dodge. And on five hits, he's got four damage uh, and a one-inch push, sorry, a three-inch, uh, a one-inch push. And it was a push on the previous one as well. Um, so he, he's getting momentum for pushing people around. So that's pretty good kind of uh, what he's like in real life, pushing people around. Um, he has 19 wounds, so uh, he's going to be quite hard to take down. He's got uh, character plays, he's got swift stance, so target model gains plus one defense, cost two, range four, so he really is a support character, pushing people about, pushing enemy models around, knocking them down, um, singling them out, and giving friendly models buffs, so plus one defense. And he has singled out, which we've mentioned is plus two tack, so uh, good for setting up for other people coming in. Um, his character traits then, he's got attack support semaphore, which is me. So while within four inches of me, uh, this model gains plus two tack. So he's actually going to be tack seven when he's within four inches of me. So it's going to benefit if us two stick together on the pitch. Uh, as we'll see in a minute, it might be quite tough seeing as... Um, as seeing as Jay broadcast seems fairly slow um, but that's pretty cool it's a pretty cool buff and it kind of uh, rings true to us in real life when we're, we're stronger when we're closer together so and the the last one which is the ode to him is uh, is called thanks for watching so his character trait thanks for watching once per turn target friendly other non-captain guild model within eight inches is allocated one influence so Jay can not only uh, give people plus one defense, he can also give somebody one influence. Um, Non-captain, hopefully me. So he'll be giving me an extra influence uh, every turn, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's just a free ability. So now on to me. So it's pretty cool having uh, a stat card made for yourself. So thanks, Ben. Uh, I think it's what everybody in our sort of hobby aspires to. Um, I'm... So I'm called Semaphore. I've got thir I'm on a 30 mil base and a two inch melee. So I love two inch melee. Like Mist, uh, I'm a, a bit of a striker. So I'm I'm the important one in the team, the one that scores goals. Your team is only as good as your strikers, as they say in real life football. Uh, movement seven nine. So I'm pretty fast. Tack four, kick four eight. So I've got a big kick. Uh, defense five plus, armor zero, and influence two four. So very similar to some other strikers in the game. Not great tack, but I'm quite fast. Got a big kick, and my defence is quite high. So I'd imagine that my wounds, yeah, I've got 12 wounds. So I'm going to be quite easy to take out. Um, with tack four, I have a four-column playbook. I've got a momentous tackle on one. So, pfft, missed. Who's lost your momentous tackle on one? I, I've got one. Uh, on two hits, I've got one damage and a momentous one-inch dodge. On three hits, I've got a momentous push dodge. Uh, on four hits, I have two damage and a double guild ball. So the double guild ball is thousand cuts. So I can either 
for, for character plays, I got a thousand cuts, which is a double guild ball, four hits. Uh, target model suffers minus two defense and one damage. So this is pretty cool for putting on a model for maybe for broadcaster running and hit, uh, especially with his extra t plus two tack. So he's going to be hitting a model at minus two defense with plus two tack if he's near me. Um, and I can also just spend three influence to do thousand cuts as well. Uh, I have just actually I never really use Thousand Cuts that much until the game I've just had uh, that I discussed earlier in the video uh, when I was playing New Captain Rage and I had um, Decimate in that team as well uh, and and she used Thousand Cuts and it is amazing it is really really brutal so I'm really pleased that I have it as well so I am a striker that can also help out the team with Thousand Cuts and the other thing is I have also have Super Shot so as most strikers do, and with a base kick of 4-8, with super shot, that takes me to 5-10. Uh, so pretty awesome. I think I'm probably quite OP. I'm quite broken, but let's hope Steamforge don't get their hands on this like they have with the Union and nerf them all. Uh, my character traits. Uh, protected Broadcast. So while within 4 inches of Broadcast of J, I get plus 1 armour. So the two together, Jay gets plus two tack for being near me, and I get plus one armor for being near him. So we're going to be hopefully running around together. Shadow like, so at the start of my activation, I get a two inch dodge. I really think I am a bit OP. So as well as being seven nine move with a potential five ten kick, I've also got shadow like to give me an extra two inch dodge at the start of my activation. So I'm actually nine eleven move with a two inch melee. Yeah, <laughs> and my um, my character trait is called, um, my last one is called Escape the Dungeon. So once per turn, this model may use Give and Go without spending momentum. So this is um, the momentous tactical play that you can use when passing the ball. So when you pass the ball, you can get a four inch dodge with the model that's passed it. So I get to do that once per turn for free. So that's pretty cool. It's again, an extra bit of movement shenanigans for me. So as you can see, I'm a pretty OP striker, and I think I'd probably give Mist a run for his money for best striker in the game. So there we go, that's the two uh, based on J and I. I will quickly, I won't run through the whole cards, but I'll just have a look at the ones on the back, which uh, potentially will talk about who who is who. So Snail Mail, which is based on Phil from Guild Ball tonight. He's a captain. We've got two captains in the team. One Steve Newton and one is Phil. So Phil's legendary play... Uh, well, his heroic play is called Spoilers and his legendary play is called Major Spoilers. So his heroic play of Spoilers, once per turn, choose a model within six uh, and they gain one effect. Errata buff. This model gains plus two tack, plus two, plus one kick or plus one armour. Or Errata nerf. Target enemy model suffers minus two tack, minus two, minus two kick, or minus one armor. So we can either buff a friendly or nerf an enemy. That's pretty cool. Once per turn. His legendary play means he can do that, spoilers, three times without spending momentum. So he gets to buff people and nerf people. These guys seem super OP. But that's pretty cool. And that's, uh, so that, that's Phil. We'll have a quick look at Chris, Rutter and Steve, because I know those guys the best. Um, Steve Newton, his legendary play is called Friend of the Show. Six inch aura. While within this aura, friendly models gain plus zero, plus two movement, so they get a buff on the charge, and plus one damage to playbook damage results and close control. Wow, and close control, so that'd be pretty good on me, giving me close control as the striker, and also giving plus one damage to all of our meaty models. And then um, on Chris. Rutters, uh, his hero he's got a heroic that's called You're Just Effing Wrong. So once per turn, choose an enemy model within 6 inches, target model suffers minus 2 tack, and any character play that causes damage or any playbook damage result caused by the target model suffers minus 1 damage. So that's pretty brutal as well. So all of us seem relatively broken. <laughs> so I haven't actually got these on the table yet, but when I do... Um, hopefully uh, we might be able to record it and I'll be able to show you what they're actually like but they do seem pretty good pretty OP to me uh, so 
the one data table which is our mascot based on Ben himself he's a robot with gluttonous mass which is pretty cool he also has rankings analysis other friendly models gain plus one attack and plus one damage to playbook damage results against the target non-captain enemy model this character play can be used once per turn because he's a rankings dude he's got rankings analysis uh, apologies to all those guys oh uh, I'll go for them all now I've done it Jamie Giblin He's got a heroic play, uh, outtakes. Once per turn, you may re-roll any attack or character play. You must re-roll all the dice. So that's cool. Hot Foot, based on James Clark from Hotgates Gaming. He's, he's Charmed Male, uh, which is fitting. He's got too hot to handle. When damaged by this model, enemy models suffer the burning condition. So that's cool as well. And then we've got um, Bill from Guild Wars tonight. Um, we've he's got damage support snail mail so when he's near Phil he's got while within four of the name model he gains plus one damage that's pretty cool and then we have uh, Straw and Parker from the Battle Hammer Postal and Hack uh, and they both have a, a heroic play called Ahoy Hoy once per turn while the named model is not on the pitch and has not been taken out, so it's for the other one. If the other model of the two uh, is not on the pitch or is within four of this model, this model and the name model can recover two HP and remove all conditions on them. So if then they are within four inches of each other or one of them isn't on the pitch, they can heal two, in two HP and remove all conditions. There you go. Uh, if you want to have a look a bit more of them, have a look online. They're pretty cool. I need to actually get some proxy models for them now before Steamforge makes them. So there you go. That's the Messengers Guild. Also, what has dropped today is a new website for Guild Ball. For Guild Ball. So on the Steamforge websites, there's a new fancy layout. Uh, and on there, if you go and have a look at the resources, there's a bit of artwork. There's a lot. There's quite a few spoiler artwork for the Hunters showing a few new characters. Uh, there's also uh, if two slight tweaks to another two uni models. So Gutter, her chain grab is now four inches instead of six, just to change that threat range slightly, because it was still seen uh, perceived to be quite big. And the other one is on Hemlock uh, and Calculus, sorry, as well. So Blind has taken a slight tweak the range has actually increased to 8 inches, but it's not minus 4, minus 4 anymore. It's minus 2, minus 2, and it applies to movement, kicking ability, and attack. Uh, so I actually think that's quite fitting, because I've always thought with blind it would be something that would affect your kicking ability as well. And minus 4, minus 4 move uh, really is, as I found out, the weekend just gone. If you can get it off in the right circumstances, it really does shut down certain teams for like a whole turn which does seem a little bit um, powerful at this stage. And, and it does lead to a bit of a negative play experiences for those model, those players you get it off on. I know Jamie Giblin, Chris Rutter uh, and Johnny Cannon and Steve to, to a certain extent didn't enjoy getting half of their models blinded. It just shuts down people like, like, like Tapper and the Brewers and the Butchers. It's quite, quite difficult to play through that. So, uh, so I am in favour of them. Uh, and Gutter's chain grab is just another thing to, to try and level Gutter out a little bit. Not sure what I think of it at the moment. Uh, I do use chain grab quite a lot, so I'll have to play a few games to see how that actually affects my play style. But it is what it is. I need to branch out from Union anyway, so it might just be the push I need to focus on fish or to eventually pick up the hunters when they're out. Uh, so I'm quite excited about that. So there you go guys, that's just a wrap up for today for me just chatting. I think I've actually filmed also a bit of me doing some more work on my brewers, seeing as this is a hobby blog. So I'll pop that on the end if you're still with us. Um, and I will think of something else to discuss in, next, in the next episode. So pop any comments to what I've discussed or what you want me to discuss in the comments. And please do share, like and subscribe to the channel and tell all your friends about it. And let's uh, keep guild balling, guys. Happy guild balling, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. So today we're back with another Hayes Hobby video log video. Uh, this is episode 
uh, six, and today uh, I will simply be painting uh, the brewers. So much like the Harry the Hat video, I'm going to cut and keep coming back um, through, through all the different stages of painting. Uh, as you may have seen on my airbrush video, uh, this is the state of the brewers after the airbrush has been on them. Uh, so they've all just had the skin done. Uh, I have put a bit more attention into scum, so ignore him for now. And then I've started the base coat on the clothes on on mash. So I just need to finish him off initially, um, some of his uh, red at the bottom. And then I'll be using the red all the way through everybody and doing all their bits of their tartan cloth the start of in a red. So I will return when I've done that. Um, and all I'll be using, again, just to show, I've got a pot of water, I've got a mixing part, I've got two naff brushes, one to mix water and paint, and then one to actually paint it on with. And then I'm using old school Citadel Mechrite uh, Red. So I'll put a few drops of water, um, a drop of paint, and we'll go from there. So I'll come back again in so we're back a bit. Um, with the red base coat on the, the cloth uh, all down. So we've got just a little bit on Friday. Um, we've got Hooper. Uh, Tapper with a bit of ginger hair, spigot, scum, we've got um, fat boy, stave, fat boy, mash. Uh, so they're all done. Uh, with mash um, on the top bit, I've done a tiny little bit more um, of a, a lighter red um, just to pick out. It looks a bit brighter, so I've used a different, slightly different red. Um, which I'll do on all the others just to make it stand out a little bit more and uh, make it a bit of a cleaner finish. So I'll uh, come back once we've done So that. we're back. I didn't actually bother with the red, like I said I was going to. I might do that next. Uh, but I've just done, mm. it was a bit easier, green for the hats and the bottles and glasses and a bit of the yellow on uh, Friday's hair and some of the alcohol, whatever it is coming out of Stave's barrel. Um, mm. And then I think I've done a bit of brown on the wood, start of wood grain on... Um, not Mash's Cricket Bat, but Mash's Mash Stirler. Uh, so just slowly picking out a few details, uh, ready for the wash, the inevitable wash. Um, so I'll do a, a bit more, and then I'll come back with an update. So that's actually it, guys. Um, I stopped there filming me painting my brewers. I stopped doing them sort of as a batch, and I started painting them as individual models. So I've actually made some progress on Mash and on tapper so I will just quickly spin around in a second and show you those uh, but apologies for not carrying on with how I was how I was filming them before things just got away with me and I forgot to record so you've got that those three clips and then here is mash uh, here is mash and tapper um, I'll just zoom down for you so there's mash pretty much complete now so I'm pretty pleased with him I am going to attempt tartan uh, based on actually the McDonald tartan because my grandfather was a McDonald and I've been lucky enough to pick up his kilt recently. You may have seen the pictures on the Gilboy Informer Facebook group. Um, and there is Tapper. Uh, he is still a work in progress so he's coming along nicely but uh, he isn't complete yet. And I'm going to try and get all of them at this stage before I attempt the tartan. And the tartan, just so that you can see, will be based on here. This is my newly inherited kilt from my grandfather. So I'm going to try and do it based on that so that they match. And then, again, a bit, because I'm a bit into cosplay, as you'll have seen from dressing up as Rage, uh, I may wear the kilt whenever I decide to play these brewers at a tournament. So I'm sure you're all really excited about that. But that's it for today's episode, and um, keep watching guys, keep communicating with us on Facebook and on Twitter, and keep playing Gilball. Cheers!